We begin in Iran. Earlier this month, as we know, the U.S. assassinated an Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps general, Qasem Soleimani. Iran retaliated a few days later with missile attacks on two U.S. air bases in Iraq. This was, by the way, after the Iraqi parliament voted to expel U.S. troops from its soil. But now, hours after the attack on those air bases, a passenger jet headed from Iran's capital to Ukraine's capital fell out of the sky, killing the 176 people on board. Iran says it shot the plane down, but that the incident was a mistake, an unforgivable mistake, according to Iranian President Hassan Rouhani. The IRGC says it had mistaken the plane for a cruise missile. But let's look at this article from June of last year. The U.S. military launched a cyber attack on Iranian weapon systems, which specifically targeted computer systems of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. And take a look at this. The U.S. military has a program that can secretly invade and control an enemy's air defense radar systems. Quote, we can show them recordings of normal air traffic patterns from last week. We can also show them screens with unidentified aircraft coming at them when none exist in their airspace. So here's all we're saying. Is it possible that the U.S. launched a cyber warfare attack and caused Iran to see the passenger plane as a cruise missile? Yes. Do we know for certain that that happened? No. But there's also this. The New York Times employee who collaborated with the owner of that famous video, the one showing the moment the plane was shot down, and collaborated with him to get the story out to the New York Times within hours, is an investigator, or was an investigator rather, at Bellingcat, which has been criticized as being an outfit of U.S. intelligence. So lots of questions here. Joining us now is Mohamed Barandi, a professor of English literature and Orientalism at the University of Tehran. Now, I want to begin by considering this quote from Iran's Supreme National Security Council, Ali Shamkani, who said that the Iranian armed forces have launched a full-scale investigation into the recent Ukrainian airliner crash, including a possible hacking operation or cyber warfare operation. Now, when I look in the U.S. media, there's very little coverage of of this quote, of this investigation, of the possibility that it may have been a foreign force hacking in to the missile defense system of Iran. I'm wondering what the situation is in Iran. Are people talking about this possibility? It is something that people are talking about. Uh, although there is no clear information at the moment whether such a thing actually happened or not. So at the moment, it's just speculation. The uh, Iranian armed forces did say that right before the missiles were fired a few minutes earlier, there were reports in the, from the Iranian radar system that there were incoming missiles coming from uh, the Persian Gulf region. And that is one reason why uh, people believe that this is a possibility, that some uh, foreign entity may have tried to uh, use uh, electronic warfare in order to mislead the Iranian air defense systems. But again, we, we really don't know. What we do know is that uh, Iranian missiles did down the airliner by mistake, uh, but that the Iranians uh, believe that there are still questions that need to be answered. Sure. And it's interesting to note that a lot of the evidence, uh, excuse me, a lot of the emphasis, especially these days in the press, is really about this Ukrainian airliner and is no longer on the so-called proportional response that the IRGC launched against those two air bases, which Iran says was intended to cause the least human casualties possible and the most infrastructure damage possible. What do you think about that? I think the reason why Trump decided not to retaliate was because he saw that all of the Iranian missiles struck their targets. They passed through U.S. air defense systems without being inter intercepted, and the damage was devastating. And on the other hand, the Iranian air defense was on maximum alert. And I think that's why, that's why we didn't have a, a battle or a, a, a two-, three-day battle between Iran and the United States, as was expected by some Iranian commanders. The reason why the plane was downed, regardless of whether there was electronic warfare or not, was because the air defense systems were expecting a major attack by the United States. But I think, again, 
the Iranian response and the Iranian capability was so effective that Trump simply didn't want to take this further. However, I think it goes beyond just Trump and the U.S. response. I think that the Saudis and the Emiratis, seeing that the United States is incapable of defending its own bases, uh, they are become much. They have become much more worried about their own fate because if Americans can't defend their own bases, they obviously cannot defend the Emirates or Saudi Arabia. Now, um, here in the United States, a lot of us are pretty susceptible to the hypnosis of the 24-hour news cycle. We're hearing, you know, the daily news about Iran and the U.S., you know, this impending war, what does it mean? But we often, in doing so, lose sight of the history that brought us here. So if you could just maybe broaden the perspective for our audience a bit, because we hear very little about the 1953 U.S.-backed coup in Iran. We hear very little about, you know, uh, the U.S.-backed Iraqi invasion of Iran. So give us a sense of what Iranians think of when they think of the United States. Well, American leaders like to think that Iranians approve of the United States government. And uh, the reason why you see people trampling on the U.S. flag or people saying down with the United States is not because they have any hostility towards the American people, but it's because of their hostility towards the United States government. The United States government not only did they overthrow the Iranian government, not only did they support a brutal dictatorship in the country and help create a secret police that killed thousands of people, but also, during the revolution, the Americans supported the Shah when, he, when his army was gunning down people on the streets. And then after the revolution, they supported Saddam Hussein, and they gave him chemical weapons to use extensively against the Iranians. I personally survived two chemical attacks during the the war between Saddam Hussein and Iran. So people in Iran have very dark memories of the United States. And, of course, after uh, the war, the United States continued its hostility through sanctions. And even after 9-11, when the Iranians cooperated to defeat the Taliban and al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, the Iranians were quickly uh, labeled the axis of evil. And so, as time progressed, the United States just simply continued to intensify its hostility. Under Obama, we had uh, very brutal sanctions directed at ordinary people, and the same is true now with Trump. So, Iranians have not seen anything positive for the United States from, from the United States for many decades, but I think ordinary Americans refuse to recognize that. You know, when it comes to the Ukrainian Many passenger jet, it's really, you know, this only happened January 8th, right? So, like you said, you said it best, it's really just speculation at this point. But when it comes to these other events that did happen in history, we have evidence that the United States has been waging both an economic and a political war against Iran. So I think it's uh, important for us U.S. citizens to consider that history. Professor Morandi, thank you.